takes reps, right? You just gotta put in the reps. We're talking today on a Mike and Madam Fire yeah. installment about an article on Financial Samurai. And it's, what if you take a leap of faith and your dreams don't come true? What ifs? Man, I got so many what ifs. Like, it's honestly, it's really fascinating. I think a lot of people can get caught up in their headspace on the what ifs. And multiple times where like, I've hit like a fork in the road and like I maybe taken a slightly bigger risk and you're like, oh my God, like what's gonna happen? But like one of the first ones I can think about is, I went to a university that was like, no one had heard of. It was like the first year the university existed and I attended. So like, there's kind of a risk there. So I went to uh, Guelph Humber. And so it was like a, a combination of Guelph University and Humber College. They created a new university called Guelph Humber and that's what I attended. And so it was really risky at the time from my perspective, because I was like, oh man, like no one's heard of the school, it doesn't matter. But they were like, oh, you get a college diploma and a university degree. And I was like, oh, two pieces of paper has to be better than one, because I was stupid back then. <laughs> and uh, anyways, you know, it like no one, it turns out like no one cared what university I went to, right? Like it, it just really never mattered in real life. The university I went to, go off on very, you have a special place in my heart because you, where I went, but like, no one gives a shit about Guelph Humber. It, it's probably a joke of a school, but it is what it is. Like, and yeah. it didn't really matter. And I think a lot of us build these things. I would have went to a different university. I would still got the same sort of education. I would have met the same sort of people. I would have, you know, like- You'd still be a CPA today. Right, or yeah. You would have went and worked in accounting probably yeah. still. Yeah, so like, I still would have been going for accounting. So like, I think often we can build up some of these into like, oh my God, what that? But like, I've done it on my channel, but. My life is just littered with failures, but I'd be interested in hearing about maybe a turning point. Yeah, um, so for the audience, you guys know, you've heard me say on my channel, some of my story, right? Starting off, you know, even at 17, I made the choice to go off to university and uh, I actually went to the Richard Ivory School of Business, which is sort of the opposite side. The exact opposite. Yeah, yeah. so it's like the best university uh, program yeah. in Canada for business. Um, Queens doesn't stand a chance. Um, <laughs> we have a little rivalry, but yeah, so it's, it's modeled after the Harvard Business Program if you're sub from the US, so you can kind of understand it's a case-based methodology of learning. Fantastic program, five times the I applied, cost. didn't get in. <laughs> Did you actually? Yeah. Back in the day? Yeah. Really? Um, so, <laughs> Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, there, there, you, there you have it, right? And then Matt's obviously financially independent. So if you're following and you've applied to the Rich Ivy School of Business, or you, you know, didn't get accepted or did and decided not to go, you can still end up being a, a pretty yeah. like an awesome guy who's financially independent. It'll still work and, out. You know, he's super successful. Like Matt's leagues, you know, ahead of me as far as like in a lot of aspects. So it, 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 it yeah, we just build things up too much in our head. But yeah, keep going. Rich yeah. Ivy. So um, you know. You, I chose one of the most expensive schools in Canada and the tuition cost when I went from you know Western University to, to Ivy was like five times, right? And that's something that, you know, on, on the line of like, what if this didn't happen, how right. it worked out, yeah. right? And it kind of did work out for me, but in hindsight, it was one of the mistakes that I made really. I built a lot of reputation, I think, like a lot of network connections through that and hopefully those mm -hmm. will pay off down the road. But, you know, at the time, like if I invested $100,000 and not going to university and just worked, and then have the opportunity cost, opportunity of effectively saving all that money over those four years, we're really talking at like almost $250,000 in net value I could have created in that time. And so mm -hmm. if I had not gone to university at all, right, what if I had $250,000 I could have invested in real estate and maybe I'd be a decamillionaire today, who knows? Yeah. Um, so you know what I mean? Like sometimes you make a choice and you think that you just don't know where, where it's gonna be. And often like, I, this is one I want to hit up because we've talked about this a little bit before, but what would happen tomorrow if you had like nothing. If there's like an inflection yeah. point where you know everything just went bust, and I don't know, mm -hmm. how someone stole your stuff. Let's just say you're at yeah. zero. Me and Kevin got to, to my stash. Yeah, it yeah. happens to the best of us. It does uh, sometimes happen. <laughs> so I would go back, start being a waiter, serving drinks to Max. Um, That's good. But no, what I like the thing is what what you got up here and your network like that will come with you, and that that's uh, you can translate that so much faster the second time, right? Like. The thing is, you know, a lot of people worry about, yeah, like we're so, we're so risk, uh, we're so fear oriented these days, right? Like the key is like actually sit down and figure out what the worst case scenario is. I see so many people panicking or lost in analysis paralysis, but the problem is the reason that they're lost is because they just haven't mapped out what the worst case scenario is. So like the reader asked uh, Sam on the uh, post, you know, what would have happened if Financial Samurai, the blog he started, hadn't taken off? Maybe he would have started a different blog. Maybe he would have started a YouTube channel. Maybe he'd have a million subs now because he would have started a YouTube channel way before it was popular. Like, 
It's yeah. one of those things. And so like, let's kind of, let's context this again. So, you know, uh, in third year university, I started up like a clothing store and skateboard shop in Grand Bend. We didn't even break even. Um, my more recently, we started up the social lab here in London, Ontario, and that's supposed to be a YouTube incubator. And we had certain degrees of success, but definitely failures. And we ended up essentially, sorry, we ended up essentially shuttering it about a year later, right? That's a failure. It's a failure. It doesn't matter. You know, like everyone gets so caught up. Like think about a lot of the famous millionaires, celebrities, you know, a lot of them have gone personally bankrupt. And one of these things that I've been thinking about a lot, and I'd love to get your opinion on, like, this is going to be a little bit off topic, but is this idea that we're so, we're so fearful of risk. And yet the system set up to promote risk taking, because it's not like you're going to fail. You can't fail and fall into debt slavery. Like you won't, your life won't be sold into slavery for the rest of your existence. Yeah. We're like back in Roman times, that shit could go down, you know, and that may taking on business proposition or investing in a rental property way riskier back then, because if you failed, your life could literally be over. Someone else could own your life where that can't happen now. Debts, most of the Western democracies we're going to be talking about, worst case, those debts may be following you around for seven years, like, or the tarnish on your credit report follows, follows yeah. you around for seven years. So think about that worst case scenario. And then I think you'll realize that you're going to be okay. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you got to think fail fast forward, the three yeah. F's. And we talk about this a lot and every iteration, every time you fail and you iterate and you make it better and you learn from that and you, you move forward, you get better and you get stronger and you, you build mm -hmm. as a person. This is how you evolve. This is really how organisms evolve into these complex structures. And this is how effectively you can do anything successfully in, in business or whatever you're trying to chase. If you buy your first rental property and you made a mistake, like my own first rental property, if we're going back to the story of, you know, what are some mistakes we've yeah. made, myself included, my first rental property, I let an, uh, an agent double end. I didn't have an agent representing me. I almost paid full asking price. It was not a good deal at all. Like when I bought it, I was probably paying over market value. I, I didn't know anything about buying a rental property. And, you know, I, I made the best of it because I renovated the property mm -hmm. and created some equity that way. But, you know, it's just a series of failures. Like I remember my first renovation taking a lot more of my energy and money than everyone's first renovation is going to do that. So prep yourself guys. Right? Yeah. So just be prepared for that guys that you're going to fail. Like it's going to happen, but it's okay. As long as you mm -hmm. fail in a healthy manner, right? You don't let it just destroy you and give right. up. And like a lot of the things that we're even deeming as failures right now, if you actually learn from it, that was actually you just learning from the school of hard knocks, right? You paid some tuition yeah. at the school of hard knocks and it's something I've talked about on my channel before, this idea that everyone wants to knock it out of the park on their first real estate deal. They all want the perfect burr or better than perfect burr. They all want the flip that makes them $100,000. They all want the $20,000 wholesale fee. And it's like, guys, if you can walk out with your shirt on your back, like you've yeah. won. Like if you can break even or better on your first real estate deal, honestly, that's fantastic. The majority of real estate investors, I don't think were that lucky in the past because they didn't have the benefit of this free information and easy access to free information 24 hours a day. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. And we're in a, we're in a, a state today and a society today where we have so many options and like a, a mm -hmm. plethora of, of opportunity, just like waiting for us to go to yeah. harvest. And so at the end of the day, if something fails, like the readers talking about, what if, you know, X or Y didn't happen? What if, you know, you failed with real estate back, mm -hmm. what would you have done? Like I know you and I think you would have been successful well, in other like, businesses. And you, we can workshop this, right? Like let's say I started real estate, whether it was the first deal or the fifth deal went wrong. At that point in time, I still had a day job. I would double down on the day job and I probably would try and work my way up the corporate ladder or I would start investing in uh, public equities probably. Again, partially because that was my background as a CPA in public accounting and then switching into uh, um, a role at a publicly traded company. So like that was a skill set that I had that was transportable that I would have focused on to try and succeed at. Yeah. And so same thing, like, I don't know, like right now, maybe you're trying to flip shit at garage sales to save up the money for your first down payment. And let's say you get burned on that or you do an FBA fulfilled by Amazon and that doesn't work out for you. Like if you still learn something from that experience, there's, that's very valuable shit. Yeah. It's you, you know, Gary Vee talks about this all the time on, on a lot of his videos about you can spend your you know, the first five years of your career just learning and failing. Oh man, yeah. It'll still be a huge success. At the end of the day, you've, you've just got to reflect on that and, and think about the fact that you know most of the successful entrepreneurs today that you might idolize or look look towards for mentorship, most of those guys failed. 
a lot of times. Like they continued to fail. Yeah. In a, in a series of, of like, iterations. I don't know how many times for our U.S. viewers, how many times has your president had the company go bankrupt? Right. <laughs> like, I don't even know, but yet he's the most powerful man in the world right now. I don't even know. <laughs> Right? Yeah. But like, it's true. And like, yeah. he's still, he's literally the most powerful man in the world right now. There you go. And that's a guy that's had multiple failures. He's also had successes. The key is like, people, fo you dwell on your failures way more than a lot of other people are doing. Yeah. Because they're focused on their failures. Yeah. You know, they're focused on the fact that they wore the wrong socks today or whatever. They're not, fo they're not focused as nearly as much on you. And the same goes for us. Like, people aren't constantly focusing on you because they, they got their own internal dialogue going on. So the key is just keep at it. Yeah, at the end of the day, you just gotta stay the course and continue mm -hmm. to iterate and improve. At the end of the day, I mean, there are so many opportunities that you can just harvest and, and take advantage of. And if this is something that, that you want, right? If you've decided that you, know, you wanna help people and that's your mission, you wanna teach about financial literacy, which seems like part of Financial Samurai's mission, I think you would have found a better, a, another outlet. Right? Maybe you, even a better Maybe outlet. starts a podcast, you, like right? it doesn't matter. Exactly. And the awesome thing is like, again, let's think about it from a risk perspective. He didn't spend a ton of money on Financial Samurai, he was just thinking his time in. Same with like, if your YouTube channel or my YouTube channel eventually turns out to not be successful or we deem it a failure based on whatever metric we set out. You know, we spend a lot of time, but like, we became better public speakers. You know, we we created a giant library of content. We've created the network and relationships that occurred. Like, e even if YouTube literally shut down tomorrow and we fail because we lose all our subscribers, we still have the skills that we still have the skills that that failure taught us. That's one hundred percent right. One hundred percent. Yeah. At the end of the day, I think that you know, no matter no matter what risk you take, right? No matter, like, we talked about taking a leap, right? And if, you know, you jump off the building and, and your parachute mm -hmm. doesn't launch, you know, it's not like jumping off a building and if, if you hit the ground, you're dead. In this case, you know, you're not. You're, you're really, yeah. there's a safety net in, in our society today, especially in, in, in most developed civilized nations. Like, there is no, you know, just to declare bankruptcy. It's like, the worst, right? worst case scenario. And like, you probably have a social safety net that you can fall into, right? Like, it's not like you literally have to completely start over. Like you still even have a little bit of support, right? Yeah, guys, it, it's gonna be okay. 100%. Don't worry about the failures. Just focus on the successes and the steps you need to get there. Uh, you know, it, it's about, I'm looking through the article to yeah. see what other things are, are key. Um, it's just, he's talking here about um, scenarios if he failed, right? And, and I've done the same thing. if. Things were to fail. Well, and um, I think we, the we talked do, about right? it originally on one of our first uh, Mike and Matt's on Fire was the idea before either of us quit our jobs, what if we failed at financial independence? And we wrote out these giant lists. And so, like, on my giant list of what would happen if I failed at being financially independent, like, at the top of the list was like, worst case, you go back to the job. Uh, but I was like, I could put a tent in my backyard and Airbnb my unit. I could, you know, get a roommate. I could do this, that, or the other. I could start flipping shit on Kijiji. Like, there's lots of angles. Yeah, yeah, there's, and same here. I've had multiple streams of income that I've relied on, right? So if real estate altogether fails, I have a dividend portfolio, for instance, that supports me. And mm -hmm. If that fails, then, you know, I've got X and Y other ventures that I'm, that I'm putting my, my feet into, right? And yeah. I feel like, again, with the knowledge that we have, it's just, once you've built up that knowledge, that knowledge is more valuable than the actual money that you've earned, I think. Because mm -hmm. you can replicate it that much faster and that much quicker. Um, at the end of the day, but I think we've kind of hit this topic yeah. pretty pretty hard. If you guys enjoyed this, this is the first time Matt's been on my channel. Yeah. We're going to start doing a recurring series every other week on each other's channel. Can we commit to that? Let's commit to that. Okay. Let's say this on camera. Um, we will try to commit. We will commit to <laughs> once a week on each other's channel. So one week his channel, one week my channel, um, where we do Mike and Matt on fire. And we still yeah. have a cool intro, but maybe we should... Film yeah. something where or maybe we're actually starting to get to the point where we actually have a few fans that could put something together that would be kind of cool because we're totally lazy and bad at technology so if you guys are good at technology dm one of us on instagram uh i'll force mike to put both of the links to ours down in the comment section down below or in the video description down below but yeah if you do video intros or like you're a good editor if you got mad skills we need someone with mad skills it'd be awesome to have someone put together a cool yeah. snappy intro Maybe, maybe it's Mike and Matt on fire with some like fire and yeah. smoke bombs and like cool shit. I don't know. Yeah. That'd be cool. We'll leave it up to you. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, as always, just wanted to end out with 
You guys are in charge of your financial futures and you control your wealth, right? By spending less, earning more, and maximizing returns to unlock a richer you. Bye. See you guys.